NASA was founded in 1958 as a civilian space agency and at the descent stage of the lunar module during mankind's greatest technological achievement, the moon landing was a plague with the writing, we came in peace for all mankind. In 1967, many countries on Earth signed the Outer Space Treaty, a contract of international space law that bans the stationing of weapons of mass destruction WMD in outer space, prohibits military activities on celestial bodies, and details legally binding rules governing the peaceful exploration and use of space. But times have changed. Space is becoming strategically more and more important, and the Outer Space Treaty has many loopholes. The US is not interested in limiting its capabilities and undergoing arms controls nowadays. Today, there are more than 3,300 active satellites for communications and navigation, such as the Global Positioning System GPS, developed for the US military, or Earth Observation, including spy satellites such as KH-11 Kenen, to track troop movements. Space is fast emerging as an area of geopolitical conflict and various powers are vying for dominance. This rivalry seems to be deeply embedded in human consciousness. When we succeeded in splitting atoms, the first atomic bomb was built, and then a nuclear power plant to generate electricity. It could be the same with antimatter, and a single antimatter bomb could wipe out an entire continent. But no weapons of mass destruction are needed in space to wreak havoc on Earth. Even tungsten rods dropped from Earth's orbit could cause tremendous destruction by releasing kinetic energy. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus, 520 to 450 BC, is reported to have said, War is the father of all things. Looking at human history to date, he seems to have been right. While security is a basic human need, the question of how sensible it would be to militarize space may still be asked. However, any concerns could easily fall victim to reality. After all, conflicts in space already exist today with an upward trend. An American F-15 fired an ASM-135 anti-satellite weapon, ASAT, on September 13, 1985 as part of the ambitious and very costly SDI program destroying the discarded P-78-1 Solwind satellite. The Soviet Union also tested weapons in space several times during the Cold War. A real combat satellite was the 77-ton Polyus in 1987, which was launched with an Energija rocket and equipped with a megawatt carbon dioxide laser to destroy American satellites, but it didn't reach orbit because of a faulty inertial guidance system. In the 1970s, the Soviet space station Salyut 3, which consisted of the components of the formerly secret military Almaz program, had a Richter R-23 rapid-fire cannon, normally used in the tail turret of the Tu-22, on board for the first time. In 2007, China launched an anti-satellite rocket from Zhejiang Spaceport and destroyed the retired Fengyong-1 sea weather satellite. A year later, the Ticonderoga-class missile cruiser, USS Lake Erie, used a modified SM-3 to shoot down the defective experimental spy satellite USA-193, officially to prevent contamination with the propellant hydrazine on Earth. But we already have a big problem with space debris. Each destroyed satellite produces more debris that endangers other satellites. This is also referred to as Kessler Syndrome. Unofficially, this launch was likely intended as a statement to Russia and China to stake claims in Earth's orbit, especially since China and Russia have tried to blind American satellites with lasers several times. There's also the mysterious X-37 project from Boeing. This reusable, unmanned space glider was initially a NASA project before the US military took over the lead. It's already been sent into orbit several times on missions lasting several months, without more details being known. In addition to space warfare, this spacecraft could also conduct satellite intelligence. President Trump first announced the new Space Force in 2018, and its creation was made official with Space Policy Directive 4 in February 2019. The Space Force officially entered existence on December 20th, 2019, when the National Defense Authorization Act NDAA, guaranteed its funding. It was signed into law and is the sixth component force of the United States. Its goal is to ensure American superiority in space. In April 2019, the Indian government established the Defense Space Agency, DSA, 
and India conducted its first integrated space warfare exercise in July 2019. India also successfully tested an anti-satellite weapon through the Indian Ballistic Missile Defense Program. August 2019 also saw the reactivation of US Space Command, which previously operated from 1985 to 2002, and whose intent is space warfare. The US Spacecom is responsible for preparing all military operations in space and includes the GPS, the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, and the Space-Based Infrared System Program. The command also operates the Delta II, Delta IV, and Atlas V launch vehicles. It will not be long before there are colonies in space, and mining raw materials here would be very lucrative. If there is regular ship traffic between the Earth and a space colony, and valuable raw materials are transported on this, criminals could be lured via these passages. Just as there is piracy in certain regions on Earth today, people could also be seduced by the prospect of quick wealth in the future. One could come up with the idea of arming these transports in order to protect them. While I myself would advocate peaceful space exploration a la Star Trek, apparently humanity is not yet ready.